I'd like to welcome you to this instructional vlog series on understanding your digital camera. This is a series on the operation of your camera, which I believe as you understand how it works and how to operate it, it will result in getting the camera out of the loop and allowing you to focus on the creative process of capturing great images. I want to explore with you how does your camera measure the color of each of the pixels or assign colors to each of the pixels on your sensor. The difficulty is that your sensor the photo side itself is just measures intensity. It does not measure color. So they had to come up with a way for your camera to see the colors of pixels. You have photo sites, and as discussed in the prior uh, vlog, these photo sites are capable of measuring light intensity. So they take the light, they convert it to a number equivalent to the intensity of the light striking that pixel and do that 25 million times or however megapixels your camera is. So in the late 70s, a research technician at Kodak designed the system where they put little colored filters on top of your photo sites. They can either be red, green, or blue. And they are placed there in a pattern named after the original patent holder, uh, the buyer pattern or bear pattern. I've heard it pronounced both ways. And what this does is the filter only passes the color of the filter. So a red filter will only pass red light. And so the amount of light measured is how much red light struck that sensor. The green filter only passes green light. And so the reading from that sensor is how much green light struck the photosite. And then the blue filter only allows blue light through it. And that measurement is the measurement of the blue that came through that. So knowing how much red, how much green, and how much blue, we can calculate a color. Challenge with this is that these photo sites, unlike film where the uh, color chemistry was stacked, these photo sites with the different filters are not exactly on top of each other. So best practices the camera uses a square of nine photo sites to calculate the intensity and the color of each site and then increments to the next one and increments to the next one. So the color portion and in part the intensity of each photo site or pixel, if you want to choose to understand it better that way, is calculated from nine photo sites. Now, I'm going to tell you this is an extremely complex calculation. There is a whole lot more nuances in this than I'm going to discuss in this overview presentation. But basically, it is Put a filter on the photo sites that tells you how much red, how much green, how much blue, and then 
the computer in your camera calculates the intensity and the color for each of the pixels based on nine data points. If you have 256 levels of red data and 256, 256 is the um, JPEG 8-bit is from 0 to 255. So 256 of green data and 256 of blue data, that allows 16 million different colors. Now, just for example, if your red is zero, your green is zero, and your blue is zero, that is a black pixel. If your red is 255, your green is 255, and your blue is 255, that's a white pixel. If your red is 128, green is 128, blue is 128, that's gray. And any situation where all three values are equivalent is a shade of gray. Now, if the red's 128 and the green is zero and the blue is zero, well, it's only measuring red light, so that was a pixel that was struck solely by red light. If red is 55, green is zero, blue is 55, that becomes a shade of magenta. Technique is called an additive color technique. So just a couple things. Uh, Bruce Beyer was at Kodak. He was issued a patent for this technology in 1976. Curiosity on some parts. In the Beyer pattern, there are two green for every red and blue filter. And the answer in the patent is that since the eyes are more sensitive to green light, you see it with more sharpness, therefore the resolution is derived from the green pixels. So in the patent, they're saying we're emulating eyesight. Now, the other reason that benefits the use of more green than red or blue is that a green filter passes more light. Therefore, the green pixels have a higher quality signal, more dynamic range. And so you're working off better data if you take the calculation, the buyer, and it's also referred to as demosaicing, calculation actually weights the green data a little bit more than the red and blue because the higher the signal, the better quality the results. In summary, how does the camera measure color? The photo site itself is only measuring intensity of light. So they put a red or a green or a blue filter over it. That's why we get the term RGB color space, red, green, blue color space. And they put it over it in a specific pattern that of course the computer knows the pattern. And the filters allow measurement of how much red or green or blue light is hitting a pixel. So it takes that information of red, green, and blue intensity and does this calculation, estimates with a fair degree of accuracy, but it really estimates what was the intensity and the color of the target site and then goes to the next one, goes to the next one, and goes through the entire series. So through that process, they can take a black and white sensor, and by measuring how much red, green, and blue, they can mathematically calculate the color of each of the sensors in uh, our photo sites in your image. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped you understand the uh, process in your sensor. Uh, we 
request that you like, subscribe, and hit the notification button so you don't miss an episode. It is my intent to create a fair amount of content um, based on my teaching a class at Coastal Carolina Community College. And so please put your comments below and come back for the next round. The next planned vlog is what assumptions does your camera make when it measures exposure? And that is actually a very interesting and powerful piece of information that I really think a um, photographer needs to know to get their images correct in certain situations.